Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on The Flash Season 5. Today we're going to be doing my review for episode 21, otherwise known as The Girl with the Red Lightning. This is the penultimate episode. We're going to be having my trailer breakdown out later tonight. I am so excited to talk about this episode with you guys because this leads into the finale and oh shit we had a great cliffhanger ending we have to break down and talk about so if you do go on to enjoy the video please be sure to leave a like and a comment and subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any DC TV videos later this year alright so we're heading into the finale next week so please be sure to turn on notifications right now if you haven't done that already click on the bell click like all notifications or something so you don't miss any videos over the summer because we're going to be making loads as I do every year. It just seems like a lot of people drop off obviously because there's less news. But if you could stick around that would mean the world to me. So just quickly before we get into this I'm going to be going to some Comic Con events in the next coming weeks. So I'm going to the Ultimates in Birmingham in England. That is with Kyla Lee who plays Alex on Supergirl. Florian Lima who used to play Maggie on Supergirl. And Adette Annabelle was going to be there, she's not going to be there anymore, but Nicole Maines is going to be there who plays Dreamer, so I'm super excited. Get your tickets right now if you haven't done that yet, I'm going to be there, so be sure to say hi if you do see me there and you can find what I look like on Instagram at the DCTV show. And so also, Heroes and Villains Fan Fest London was just cancelled and postponed till February next year, so I'll be going to that next year, obviously, as I do every year. But for now, I'm going to be going to MCM London Comic Con instead on that same weekend later in May. So that's in London. A bunch of us are going to be there. We may be doing a panel on DCTV talking about my YouTube channel, talking about Batman and its 80th anniversary and lots more with a bunch of people, including DC World. So I'm very excited if we potentially might be doing that. So say hi if you see me at any of those events. Also. I think I'm going to be going to San Diego Comic Con, so I think more of you will probably be there because that's like the biggest event of the year and I've been accepted for a press pass, so I'll find out in the next few days if I'm actually going or not and I'll let you guys know. So let's get into this review, sorry for the delayed start, but I will leave a link so people can skip over it in the video if they want. So number one let's talk about the stuff in episode 21 we're gonna go through it bit by bit break it down so reverse flash opens the episode in his prison cell in 2049 and it's a very mysterious opening because it just starts on his face pulls out and then you see this sort of torture chamber be rolled out it's like a little device that they're gonna put him in you see that later in the episode and so they electrocute him and it's just a great way to tease what's to come next later in the episode but also what had been happening and what we've been leading up to this whole season because we've had the timer what was that leading to we were like death row or the metahuman cure what is going to happen to him and we had lots of theories as to why he was so specific about using and destroying cicada's dagger and we find out why later in the episode and let's move on right to that Okay, so by the end of the episode, they were able to stop Cicada, and throughout the episode, Ralph has been investigating by himself. He's been sort of left alone because no one's listening to him. Like, I guess if it was anyone else, like if it was Barry coming up with this information, everyone would listen. So I felt bad for Ralph in this episode, but he was being very smart. He was doing the detective work, and so... He has these little inclinations to do with Thorn in this episode, and he's been thinking about it, so he sort of questions why would Thorn send back Nora in these specific times and you get these various shots of Cicada's dagger and there is absolute emphasis throughout the episode on the dagger and the fact that Cicada earlier in the episode or later in the episode past that point actually teases that she never had the dagger in the future so where was it because no one ever destroyed it and so Ralph is sort of figuring out what's going on with Thorn and something is up with the timeline and how everything has played out because Ralph maps out in the episode and it acts for some really great scenes and we head towards the ending of the episode and we get this cliffhanger and so it's them shooting the mirror gun at Cicada's dagger and it's at that point Ralph realizes oh shit Thorn has planned this out he's 10 steps ahead he has the dagger and that is revealed he has it in his vest 
and it's right on his chest and it's been there the whole time and so they're about to put him in you know the chamber potentially kill him or something and the reason why Thorn has planned it out and told Nora oh we need to stop Cicada was not to help Nora but to help himself so he can get out and it's all led to this moment and they cut the screen with a black frame and holy shit that was such a great ending to the episode and it really proves that Reverse Flash is one of the smartest villains out there like I just love him to death and at that moment we're all sitting in our chairs watching this episode we're like oh shit what is happening next that's a suspenseful scene and so we see it on his chest on his sort of vest thing that he's been wearing the whole season it was obviously very specific in the costume design so it was implemented early on it wasn't just you know them coming up with it in the end so he's had this dagger and now that they're using the gun to destroy the dagger as reverse flash has planned and told everyone they know he's been manipulating Nora, but they didn't know how, and they play into it because they're not listening to Ralph, so they shoot the gun, then it ends with a cliffhanger, but we potentially realise, oh shit, he's going to escape, and we know in the finale, he will be in present day, so does that work, or does Ralph stretch out and stop it, because he's the one that realises at that moment, he's the only one they shouldn't be doing this because this is all part of Thorne's plan. He's going to escape. And so once he gets that dagger destroyed, he's going to run the hell out of there and kill all of them. So Cicada earlier in the episode teases what's going to be happening because, you know, she never had the dagger in the future. And that is emphasized a couple of times. All right. So let's go right back to the start of the episode. So we see the original Cicada Orlan in Grace's mind. So it's just, you know, in her head, in her mindscape. And I thought Grace was better in this episode. I'm not the biggest fan of Cicada. I think Cicada was quite good at the start. And I think he's been dragged on a bit too long. A bit like Agent Liberty on Supergirl. But I like Cicada quite a lot more though. And so there is this big storyline in the episode with the Metahumans all coming to CCPD. They have to look after them, give them shelter and administer the metahuman cure that has been teased for a very long time so joe and cecile were there they go to the captain and he's like joe you take charge of this i'm going to go have a meeting about all of this and if we can actually do this and so this is definitely teasing you know joe becoming a leader potentially becoming the captain when captain singh retires or he gets killed or something like that as the shows go so yeah that was quite interesting in the episode and Sherlock. I love Sherlock. I have to say, I think he's one of the best things about the season. His whole detective side of the story and his mystery, you know, with him figuring out what was going on with Nora. That was so intriguing episode to episode. I've loved him. I think he's a great version of Harrison Wells. And they do set up for him to leave by the end of the season. We'll talk about that just in a sec. But Sherlock and his girlfriend, Renee well they are official by the end of the episode are attacked by cicada early on and then we see as we head later into the episode sherlock's trying to be protective of her and make her get the metahuman cure so she's safe but she realizes no i don't want this i want my powers i like my powers so they find a way and sherlock sends renee off earth to his earth and this sets up his leave from the show i reckon he'll come back a couple of times like harrison wells in season two because you know I think Sherlock's a pretty big fan favorite if I can register it well in the community but I love him personally so I would really like to see him again so I reckon he will leave by the end of the season and so Renee leaves to Sherlock's earth in this episode so that was a really great part of the episode I thought and so we move back and we see Nora throughout this episode having this connection once again to Grace and so Nora has these streaks of red lightning that course throughout her body and so that's the reference in the title the girl with the red lightning I thought the girl with the red lightning the title would mean a bit more the points in the episode where Nora taps into the negative speed force were a little bit underwhelming because she was just standing still and it was grace in her mind so yeah maybe I was a bit let down in terms of the title because the title was so cool and I thought they would maybe use more of the negative speed force but overall I thought Nora stuff was pretty good in this episode so you see the lightning taking over and she's been essentially controlled by Grace's anger as they still have that connection from when Nora was in Grace's mindscape and so we get these various references in the episode to the Flash family. There's a shout out to that. That was a really nice moment. 
that relates to the comics and we see lots of connections with Cisco's roommate we had some very funny moments in the episode due to Cisco being around and I don't know if he's going to leave next season or not but I'm very curious to see about that in the finale and we see at various points Grace is trying to fix the device she gets the device there's this explosion then with Nora connecting using that device that Cecile I believe used last season to tap into Rose's mind or she just kept on wearing it. I kind of forgot but anyway it was made for her by Harrison Wells and so Nora uses that to tap into the negative spear force as they come over all of their queries in the episode between the West Allen family and so she finds where Cicada 2 is and she descends upon CCPD and Ralph has this really nice line where he says supergirling away which is a nice reference to Cicada's constant flying up and down which is a little bit weird but you know it's a bit like Supergirl you know she puts her dagger in the air and she flies but her flying's a bit weird it's like just a shoot up into the air rather than a fly per se so I, I really like Ralph in this episode I have to say I thought he was a great part with all the mystery and you know the fact that no one was listening to him but he was the one getting the answers and we have these nice little shout outs in the episode from Ralph. We get a call back to season one with the thorn trap as Cisco now calls it so they use it to contain Nora so Nora doesn't overload when she's looking for C Cicada and she's tapping into the negative sweep force so that was when reverse flash when he was Harrison Wells put the hologram of himself in the device I think it looks a tiny bit different but Cisco said he upgraded it in this episode and reverse flash was inside there as you know not the real version of himself and Harrison Wells was just sitting on the chair so I like that callback and I like how they're linking Nora and reverse flash's story to season one because it's very reminiscent of season one and I think they've done a great job this season in terms of tone and how they've done everything. So this all leads to the ending before we get to that cliffhanger where we have Killer Frost, The Flash, Cisco, and Ralph all fighting Cicada. And so by the end of the episode, I got the gist that Cicada is basically done. Like, she's probably going to have a few more scenes next episode, but I think the main focus as we head towards the end of next episode is Reverse Flash. And so that was the cliffhanger, that was what was teased, that's the big moment that is going to be obviously continued into the finale and I'm guessing continued into season 5 with Crisis on Infinite Earths coming because the Reverse Flash is supposed to be such a vital part of that. There is no way that the finale doesn't set up Crisis on Infinite Earths in some way to do with Reverse Flash specifically and we know on the other shows the monitor is showing up over a dead body on Supergirl apparently that's Lex Luthor obviously big spoilers right there and he's supposed to show up on Arrow season finale as well so very interesting that they're all setting up and leading towards Crisis and I think what's happening with Reverse Flash is leading up to his return next season as well he's been great this season I love the addition of him just constantly throughout to do with Nora even when he wasn't even interacting with our main cast only interacting with Nora it was always great and I love it so thank you guys so much for watching this review please be sure to subscribe turn on notifications so you don't miss any videos over the summer and my trailer breakdown for the finale coming later tonight also, if you're in London or if you're in England or Europe or you can fly over, please be sure to come to the Ultimates on the 17th and MCM London Comic Con just a few weeks later. You can look that up online and I will be at both events. So say hi if you see me and anyway guys, I will catch you guys later. Goodbye.